Michael Anderley and Gene Malakai. Welcome to the Behind the Fiction podcast. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, people who listen to this podcast regularly know Michael, but Gene, can, can you tell listeners a little bit about yourself and your studio? I have an art design studio that specializes in entertainment packaging, and most of what we do is book covers. So we specialize in uh, entertainment photo shoots, um, and then we do a lot of post-production on them, a lot of heavy uh, photo bashing and retouching, and so it, it makes us good for entertainment. And we're in New York, so we do a lot of books. Okay, and you met Michael and Judith Anderley where? At the Boston Fantasy Fest, uh, May of 18. And uh, we were invited up there to, to speak, actually, um, by Jasmine Walt, who organized it. And I was really excited. Um, at first, I, I wasn't that familiar with the event. And then as I got more and more familiar with it and the attendees, uh, Michael was actually somebody I wanted to meet. Um, so when we made the decision, when I made the decision, and this isn't, you know, so, you know I mean, now I, we hear the real I truth, had, the I, unvarnished I, truth. I'm too you know, far in things where you say, I had this feeling, I had this hunch, you know, I had no idea who's going to go up there. It wasn't a large event, but I felt like, okay, we're going to go. And I was like, yeah, I want to meet this Michael Enderly guy. I got to meet this author. Um, that was one of the things I seriously said to myself. So, um, so we were. It was funny when that night, Friday night, was our only night to show our work. After that, they told us we had to clear up our, our booth. But we had a lot of stuff available, a lot of our offerings available. And Sasha had engaged you first. And I thought, you know, on my way down there, because I was, I was rushing, I got tied up, and I, I was scrambling down there. And uh, who was at the booth first? It was Michael Enderley. So I said, well, yeah. that's convenient. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Well, you, you have, it's too, it's interesting because there are two names that are relevant to what you've done. One name, I think readers of Urban Fantasy will know, period. And this is traditional, Kevin Hearn. Yeah. So you guys did the coverage. Can you speak a little bit about it? Because one of the things, as a speaker, you actually had placement, a great placement. And you had a lot of stuff, like you said. And you had these pull-up uh, vinyls that had your book covers full size. And I'm going to speak to our indie author friend in a minute as well. But there, you had something on display. You had a necklace on display. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a necklace that we had custom-made for Kevin Hearn's series. Uh, like everything, I don't know, I have this obsession with making sure everything's accurate to the stories. Mm -hmm. I think it's because traditional publishers gave me such a hard time about giving me any kind of details at all that I decided <laughs> I'm going to overtax them and I want to know specifically. Kevin Kevin draws his, his, his ideas out very, very well. He'll draw mm -hmm. compositions. So after I insisted from the art director, who's a very nice guy, and he insisted from the editor that we get Kevin's opinion, he came back with all this detail and he, he illustrated this necklace. So I had a metalsmith make it who is extremely talented and he specializes in actually using older tools so he gets the right finishes. So if you if you search around, you can find anybody to create almost anything uh, from a custom sword, you name it. So that's, um, we, we did a custom necklace for him and we also had to design a custom tattoo that, you, that, that reappears. And actually I had to hand draw that thing every single time because there was no more efficient way to do it and so I think those are the two. And I think uh, as that series went on, we might have made one other necklace for a female character that appeared. So Yeah, that's Kevin Hearn's Iron Druid series, if you're curious yeah. about that. You can see the necklace that he had. The second one that was there that you were promoting was Shane Silvers. Yeah. And I happen to know Shane Silver, so um, I was looking there and just appreciating the quality that you guys had done when I was sitting there in front of your booth. So now you can take the rest of the story. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I mean, Shane, Shane, uh, we showed a lot of his work. We showed a lot of, uh, he's a good guy, good client. Um, and, uh, well, we show, you know, my, my main thing, and, and that's why, you know, uh, Sasha and I collaborate, we both have one vision. It's to make it true to the story and whatever we don't have, we're going to make, we have a custom costume designer who's on our team. She's been with us for years, or we'll go to stylists in, in LA uh, or like, as I said, you can have almost anything made if you if you're willing to look for it. Uh, and, and you know, in the case of uh, Opus X, we've got more 3D assets. So, uh, you know, whatever we have to do, you know, it just makes it fun. 
Uh, Gene, you've mentioned it. you've mentioned Sasha a couple of times. Can, who who is Sasha yeah. for for listeners? Sasha Amazon's my production designer, and she's uh, she's she's just um, somebody that grounded I, one. The grounded one. That's, I don't know. It's true. I don't know. I mean, the two of us is amazing workflow, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's the grounded one. When my bookkeeper walks in here, you often she's just like, "Oh man, we need a business manager in this place." But um, but uh, but, I'll, but I'll say this, I and mean, you've seen her in the photo shoots. It's like laser attention to detail and storytelling, and doesn't miss a beat. I'm the opposite. I go into the photo studio. I'm just looking for great shots. So when we teamed up a couple of years ago, it was quite a blessing because typically, you know, when she came in as a, as a hair and makeup artist, I've always had hair and makeup really? artists. Yeah, she came to us as a hair and makeup artist. I've had many on my team. I've had many photo assistants on my team. I've had everybody. But when she came on, she actually loved the genre. I wasn't talking somebody into doing the work. I had somebody who had to do the work. And as I hired her more and more, I saw all the prep work she was doing and all the preparation. And I thought, what? What's going on here? And then later, about six months into it, I, you know, she was curious about the cameras. And so I started to say, well, shoot, go ahead, take a shot. And then that actually helped me with my lighting. So I actually got rid of all my assistants. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of all the grip. And because, you know, you can load these, these studios up. And I said, you know, we're actually working more efficient, just the two of us. Because we're actually talking well in advance of the photo shoot. We're actually preparing like you would want, like I'd always dreamed of, going in, knowing what we want. And the fact that she's great with the styling and understands the hair and makeup and then is a great photographer after two and a half years of doing this, it's just very, very, uh, it's a great collaboration and we're expanding it now in the video. So um, we're, as the, the longer you stay in the game, the better Thing, more things happen. That's nice. I'm I'm curious. So you, you're you're both in Boston. You meet you meet Michael. Yeah. Did you start talking about the Opus S pro, Opus X project then, yeah. or did that come we're later? About, no, we we're looking at uh, what restaurants were local, and we wanted to go out. I thought. <laughs> we weren't. Even, I was like, <laughs> but we had to stay. We had to stay and talk. Well, well there's one. So I was aware of what I was looking for. So I had um, something I'll call a passion project. And a passion project is something that you really want to produce and you realize it might or might not make the money back. Now, obviously, you want it to. But I was looking to create Hollywood level special effects, Hollywood level covers, Hollywood level modeling on maybe not a Hollywood level budget. <laughs> And when I was talking with Gene in his studio and seeing the stuff that they had done and the prep work that had been into it, it for me was already like, I think I found the person that I, that I want to work with or the, the company that I want to work with. Yeah, so uh, I remember that very clearly because some of the things you were mentioning we hadn't done before. And whenever I hear an X Factor like that, it tends to stay with me until it's absolutely finished. So I met Michael May of 18. I don't think I actually slept a full night's sleep until like last week when we handed everything in. <laughs> and I went to the beach for a week. So, you know, it was really great. I mean, you know, he... he... We followed up at Dragon Con. Yes, we did. And Which that just was... happened here a year later. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah, well, we followed up at Dragon Con, which was, which was great. Um, and we were well, we were just kind of what we had, uh, we we're just about to produce the books. We were getting really, really close. We had, we we're starting to roll the stuff out. We hadn't quite gotten to that point. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're talking 2018 and I remember Judith and I were traveling somewhere. I don't remember where, but they, they it was like December almost when we were still nailing down shots. Cause when did Judith right. come over there to do the actual model shoot? It was, I, I have it on my calendar. I think it was, I think it was early. Over. Late Cover, yeah. I think we had the photo shoot. Didn't we have the photo shoot? It was booked yeah. right around that time. Because you're right, the car asset wasn't completed until about mid-December. Right. So we had some different aspects of it. So from there, I mean, we'll talk a little bit about like the models. We had special, you know, the specific concerns about what the models were going to look like and what their their um, gender and everything else was. But also, you guys brought something to it that I had never expected. And that was you got, you had access to Hollywood props. 
And I remember getting this list that went on and on of things that we could actually like, yeah, can we borrow this? And you're talking Hollywood level and, and asking an author to look through a model or a list of stuff that can go on his books. I, I, I was like, yes, yes, meh, maybe not. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> and some of these things was interesting because it was typically Sasha, but Sasha and Jean as well. They'd be like, well, they use this. And I'm like, well, they weren't, but they will now. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. You know, because yeah, we well, don't. Like, that was well, overwhelming. Um, yeah. The, 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 the premise here was I'm allowing the creative to drive the stories, not the story to drive the creative. So I wanted to create the world that Gene and his company were pulling together and then make sure that we had those pieces in the stories to make them congruent. So I, I, you know, disruptive imagination, that's where our company is. I wanted to actually see what could we do if we had these visuals and then put a story to them. Right. Noticing that we had a story already. You you mentioned Michael earlier, or or maybe it was Gene that mentioned the car asset, and Michael's mm -hmm. explained the car to me before, but I I I've never completely understood it. So I assume that people who are are listening and watching this don't understand it at all. Could you could you talk us through the creation of this car? You want me to start this, Michael? Yeah, so, yeah. That was that was a Gene question. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, well, yeah. You know. It, like a lot of things that are, uh, you know, as you're creating them for the first time, you're, you're going through all these, you know, does he does he know we have to make a car? Probably if we're going to feature a car as a character, because I can't cobble that out of Photoshop every single time. I can't illustrate it accurately every time and make sure it's the same exact look. So then it was a matter of, yeah, having someone build a 3D model that was really competent. And we have someone on our team who is exceptionally competent at modeling and texturing. And so I, I told Michael, and I was a little nervous to do this because I hadn't mentioned it up front, that if we if we go this direction and it's on all of the covers, because I think that was debate. I think he was debating how often the car showed up. How, I, I think he was wondering, maybe, can it be done? And if it can be done, I'd like to have it done. And so as we discussed it further, it was like, okay, this is this is going to have to be one of the things we deal with first. You know, what is this character? What does this character look like? It's a car. How do you want to? So we went through all these body styles and we went through all these colors mm -hmm. and we talked and talked. And now we did start initially just looking at things that are available, just to kind of take away some things. And Michael had already done a lot of research as I'm learning more and more. Um, so he knew what he wanted. And uh, that's that's what happened. So we, we, we created the car. So in this, what was going on is I'm looking at it. I understand 3D. We've done some stuff in our own company that when it comes to unique, you know, some of the, the stories that the, the movies that inspired me included Ghost in the Shell and included Blade Runner, included a lot of these kind of cyber uh, sci-fi and if you go back and look like the original Blade Runner and some of the, the cars that are in it, they're unique. And yeah. so I didn't want anything that looked like it had been cobbled or taken from an existing. And I'm like, no, I want a sports car. I want it to look, you know, unique. It's, it flies. It does these things. And it needs to be something I can brand because I in that even at that moment, I'm like, I want a video. I want a little video. And this isn't anything I necessarily shared with people originally because <laughs> I didn't know if I could get it. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I, I did push forward with it, knowing where I wanted to hope to go to. Yeah, well, uh, that's a nice thing about having any kind of 3D element made is that you say to yourself, well, OK, you know, it's, it's, it's ours now and we can animate this and we can proceed with other ideas. That's why, I mean, even on a 2D level, I wanted it because if we're going to show it, it was just the most efficient way to work. So we actually, you know, we do use 3D assets, but usually they're not at this level. Um, so this was the first time, you know, experimenting with going through this process. And it was it was just fantastic. And then you had mentioned the video in Boston. And I was like, who really wants this video, I think, too. In the back of my head, I go, if this comes up again, and it most likely will, you know, what is the answer? So. We started to do all kinds of research on the on, on the back end without actually telling Michael we were doing it because yeah, Gene's I, comment is that we can do it. We can do it. And now I'm listening to I think we can do it. <laughs> that was Sasha. It was not here. Now that was Sasha. She, she's always like, you know, you have to tell him you can do it. 
I'm like, you know, what? I've been in business for 15 years. And one of the things I like to say is, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> you know? And then over deliver if we if we're gonna deliver it. Yeah. So And what does Sasha say now about the video? I have, I don't know. I think she's like, oh man, they actually pulled it off because you know she hears about this. You know, we were talking about cars for the last nine months. <laughs> and I was, uh, we've been geeking out over this for nine months. So I, I think she's really happy with it. Yeah. Really good. Happy. Yeah. So this is yeah. sort of a, a vicious tease it, it, to a future show where we're going to really go in depth in, into oh, the creation yeah. of the video and Absolutely. show some of the video. Right now, it is completely under wraps. Just know that it's really cool. But when we were talking the other day about the idea of making the video, you were talking about the hardware needed to make the video and what your initial expectations yep. were and, and what reality turned out to be. Well, you know, getting back to what I said earlier, you know, when you discover, when you do into something new, uh, there's always nuances in a process. And so one of the things that we did actually was we ran tests first. We wanted to know, well, you know, how are we going to make this? It was a procedural city. And so that was going to be how we we're going to do it. We picked the software and then we, and then that was, that was really prior to anything else. And I, we, we showed that to Michael and we sort of got an immediate green light. Just that test alone, I think, took out the motherboard, you know, out of <laughs> and so it was like, from the beginning, we were just rebuilding, but because, you know, Frank, he builds his own machine, so it wasn't like, you know, if it was my machine, we'd be in a panic, because I, I, I just, I hit panic, by but Frank's like, don't worry about it, I got it, by Monday, he had it repaired, built, Without I think you smoked something in the machine. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I mean, I'm a Mac guy. That says it all. You know, <laughs> tech guys, you know, they build their own stuff. So I felt confident we'd be okay. And then, uh, as you say, as we got into the final renders that were going on and on and on, we had to get new graphics cards in those machines that cut our time by a considerable amount so we could actually do these renders and see what our results were and keep moving. So, you know, throughout this process, we're going to keep doing more things so that we become more efficient. Like I said, the car, we're looking under the hood of the car right now because we had this week off. Uh, we took, we sort of um, had this week in our calendar as, okay, a regrouping week. So we, we are looking at the car right now and we're actually working on some new machines. So, <laughs> and, and just, so we can handle whatever gets thrown at us a little bit better. You know, <laughs> literally, I think, you know, we got one, one done, we're building two more. I'm going to park so, over here. Steve and I were talking about this a little bit. I think the, the piece that, that sticks in my mind when you were talking to us about it last week or two weeks ago was the fact that you did this metaphor where you said, yeah, we had these issues with the machine. So we just we went to the store and we bought all of these uh, video cards and we just threw them in the shopping cart and took the shopping cart and dumped it into a machine in order for it. And so I just see this visual of just dumping all of these video cards into a, a case and closing it up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these... Um... Frank can tell you better, but it was like, you know, these things are monsters. We'll show you more about this when we get into the real geek sessions that are to come. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like any, like any uh, visual effects artist knows, you know, the, the graphics cards are doing the rendering in a lot of these cases. It's not just the CPU. So um, the, to get these things going, you know, we had to basically, you know, we had to rebuild these machines. Um, <laughs> have you melted the, them? The atmosphere, volumetric lighting is, you know, we, we have a ball over here. So we want to we blow more stuff up. <laughs> you know, we're just going to keep doing it. Michael, we at, at LMBPN create a lot of covers. I mean, we, we, we deal with a lot of cover designers, and we create a lot of covers. Um, can you kind of talk through how much this process is, expands upon just the traditional cover design process? Yes. I've been through a few instances, where, like the early Carthurian Gambit, where we – did a little bit of model shooting. We did some um, uh, character acquisition for swords and different pieces. But what you do there is, is it was a model, Bethany Ann, and we would purchase things either off of eBay or whatever. You might take some guns, some plastic guns, where you spray paint them black. That is, I mean, the leagues of difference, and, and that was expensive, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, we have a situation where someone photo bashes, typical cost, 300 to $500 a cover. And then you have model shoots that usually costs us eight hundred to a thousand dollars a cover, and then we have this process. <laughs> but the days are over. Yeah, 
Think about the thing about a passion project because I understood that I'm going to throw a lot of money into this before anything happens, and I knew that, and I was okay with that process. Perhaps Judith wasn't as okay with that process, but I was, yeah. and so, you know, we we go through it, but. Because you're stepping up, you're stepping up so much more. So instead of, let's say that, I'll go back to Bethany and Anna's example, we go to eBay and we get a coat and we get a, a, a pair of boots or something. Well, here we get a document with 200 items we have to go through and find out which ones are the coats that we're going to use. Because in one, one shooting day, they're going to take hundreds if not thousands of shots for 12 books that means 12 complete changes of clothes 12 complete issues with makeup perhaps you know it does all of those and so uh, in bringing that together we had to get 12 coats 12 tops 12 pants you know all of these things that we had to get um the chain that we're going to use the gun that's going to you know kind of be represented and we go back and forth and all of these things and so for me, it was almost like homework. Sasha gives me these lists of things to do. What are the titles? What are they wearing here? What's the look? I'm like, uh. Track. There was one moment in there in the frenzy between her and the uh, stylist uh, in, who was uh, shopping for this in L.A. where I, I just couldn't keep up with the conversation. I, I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is this is intense. I think we had about thirty thousand dollars worth of costumes on set that day. And it was just racks. And, and that's what I mean. It's just, you know, so you need somebody who's really, really capable in that area. Um, and she did, she does a fantastic job with that. And, and you did a, a bit. The gun is custom made, by the way. We don't talk about the gun much, but the gun also is, is an asset that we had made. Yeah, a 3D asset. It that had its own brochure. It had. Due to being sensitive to what's going on, we're, we're not really pushing that. Yeah, right, but, right, right, right. <laughs> um, but the other thing that was interesting is we happened to be uh, on a call with Sasha and uh, with Jean when the doorbell rang. And they go over and they go, huh, what's at the doorbell? Because we all basically work out of, of studios. Right. And it was seven huge boxes of stuff. And so I'm listening kind of off camera. So they're like, oh, wow, look at this gun. This is so cool. This is going to be fantastic. I'm like, guys, hello. And then I might get an arm in with <laughs> something and then we go back out again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It's, that did happen, right? It was, it was a nice day, too. It was like a summer day. So that tells yeah. how long. Yeah, it had, that shit had to be around the end of September or something. Yeah. yeah, it was about a year ago. Similar. Now, Gene, when you were describing this, you were painting a great sort of word picture of, of what happened during the model shoot. But for people listening, we do have digital assets of that model shoot. You've, you've had people with cameras around basically filming everything. So yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, be sharing, we'll be sharing some behind-the-scenes videos of that day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, we, we shot um, a bunch of footage, HD, GoPro, VR. So we have all kinds of things we can share. Describe that day, you know, from start to finish. Not, you know, not like in 20 minutes, was, but, you yeah. know, when did you start? When did you finish? What happened in between kind of thing? Uh, well, any photo shoot of this magnitude, you know, the first hope is that you don't have any hang-ups, uh, like the shutters and fail, uh, your equipment works. And so we had a great day. Everything was spot on. The costumes came in, and like Michael said, well in advance. So we knew we, we knew our team was together and we had all of our props where we wanted them. Uh, we, it was a long day. We got in there at 9 a.m. We cranked all day long. I, and, and like I said, uh, thank God for the woman who's about to walk in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, so we're just talking about the shoot. And, hey, guys. Uh, this Hello. Is Sasha. Hey, Sasha. Hi. How are you? So. I like how you're still away. Come closer to the microphone. <laughs> yeah, you got to talk into the mic. Ah, great. Yes, yes. So, you look great silhouetted there, Mike. <laughs> yes, yes. I like the He's blur got like on a, the background. We were talking about that lens you must have on. There's like yeah. a 1.2. Yeah, look at that lens, man. Yeah. So, nice. But we were talking about uh, that the day of the shoot, Steve just asked us, you know, mm -hmm. what was that experience like? And I was telling him that we had a, a fabulous day our, our props were all in everything was working right excuse me while i let the dog out of the office it's get out of here um so um you know that was that's always our hope is that you know the team is all there models all show up and they and we had a great day our, our model the female model we had never worked with we we, we picked her out in a casting that we had about a month prior or two months prior that's how we met her uh, and, and she did a fantastic job. 
Paul we actually, actually, we had her come in, um, and we had like a trial with her. Yeah. And she yeah. shot a couple. She did really well. He he got some shots, and I was a little worried at first. Yeah, castings don't I tell you You know, everything. I was a little worried, and I thought, you know, if she's stiff, if she right. cannot move well, yeah. if she doesn't know how to hold a gun, if she doesn't feel comfortable holding a gun, if she doesn't feel comfortable, you know, moving with a sword and... I, you, it's really hard to to grasp that to to ask someone like, are you into science fiction? Like, can you really grasp this character? Like, this character is so. I think this character yeah. is going to have a lot of layers, and so I feel like if if she's not an actress, a little bit, it yeah. wouldn't have it wouldn't have come off. And I was worried that morning because yeah. she came in and I, I <laughs> and she asked me something and I was just like, wait a minute, you're ready to go, right? You're ready to go. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, but a switch went on in her, and she did an outstanding job. I, I think yeah. we say she was be one of the best talents we've ever brought in. She she kept up with Paul. Paul's amazing. He's amazing. He's tough. Yeah. He's tough to, like, he usually, we get Paul in when we're not sure if the female talent is going to be able to pull it off. We, well, it's always nice to have somebody there you I mean, know delivers. I mean, just someone who is, like, Okay, I'm, I'm, it's not, I'm not saying anything negative. I'm just no, saying sometimes no. it's good to have somebody there who you know is very experienced. He can do every genre. His face is, is like, you can get anything from this yeah. guy. I mean, he... You can get him at trade shows. You can oh, get him at trade shows. Smolders. His, yeah. his nickname is Smolders. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, that guy... He, and he's so sweet. Yeah, he's really But humble, he's very, like, encouraging, and he really gets into it. I mean, if you could see some of the shots, we should show you some of them, Steve, and that um, are then when they're messing around and when they're, like, jumping off of, like, we put this platform, we had them diving off of it, running at us, and, like, there's an explosion behind you. you got to feel the explosion behind you. And then we blast the fan on them, and we're like... We're going to share like, that with the whole world. we got the BTS. Yes. Eventually. Actually, Eventually. It's, it's another podcast. It's another. We can't yeah. do it now, but yeah. 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 That's yeah, it. And you. Definitely. That's you. That's that's you driving it. That's Sasha driving it. I mean, yeah, I'm there, and I'm probably the reason why it's always awesome. But <laughs> you drive it. You drive it. I was I, telling. I'm like, I was bragging more about fan, you. Gene. I was bragging about you. <laughs> <before you got laughs> Was, and by and by, you were there. What you're really saying is, you were there to move the lights for Sasha. You were there to move the fans for Sasha. You fired a light at me. I think you actually fired a light I at me. I did. I yeah. didn't like his talk back. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk back on set. But we like, we were actually talking about how you worked with our stylist in LA. Yeah. What you went through at Universal and at Warner Brothers Studios to get all those costumes, and we had about three thousand. And, and and just how much you chose, and how you straightened all that in your head, and how you. I, I was telling. I was just trying Michael. to like the amount of stuff that they have there. You're talking about um, aisles and aisles and aisles, and like getting on a ladder and digging stuff out. And so she's just, she's just looking at all this stuff and just sending me pictures, 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 pictures. How about this? How about this? I don't know. So I'm, I can't touch anything, and I, I really am so like I have to touch it. I have to feel the material. Like how is it going to come off? Like with this, can I pile this on top of it? Is this too heavy? <laughs> right. All these different things that can anyone move in it. Yeah, like well, we'll make a move if she. That's why yeah. they also have to yeah. be very limber. But um, so she's sending all this stuff, and I'm trying to in my mind like get some kind of color system going like what's the background going to be how is this going to look if we have everything red in the background or if we do like blue grays or what are we doing how is this costume going to work and that's why we we really have to stick with the creative uh, briefs the creative briefs which we didn't in. actually bring up in oh. this interview but we can touch on it now okay wait let me just start with that what are we bringing up in the interview <laughs> well everything this everything is everything i'm talking process. about is like but well, we're not bringing that up no, 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 no. We're bringing okay. up the creative brief, like how we, how we, how we, the photo shoots certainly, yeah. and how we, how we set up photo shoots, and we set them up very carefully with the information that Judith provided at first was a reply from our, our initial questionnaire that we provide, and then upon the questionnaire we start to build sort of the big picture, and then we start to refine it, and then days before the shoot, because we want to give the client more time. In this case, am one I allowed to interrupt? Because we obsess. <laughs> About it, goes. so he really did. No, no, no. What are you talking it about? It comes what? in, and we like obsess, and then I dream about it, and then I think uh, about it, and I'm yes. like, you're absolutely wrong. Yes. We have to ask this question. You didn't ask this question. I don't understand this. I'm wrong. And then, and then, I'm wrong. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. And then, and then it comes back to what you were saying a few days before. What? Okay. For prior to the panic. shoot. Panic. 
we okay I, okay but but to my credit <laughs> We make sure we dot all the t, dot all the i's across all the t's. Now I'm good about that going into the shoot. I'm a little bit more nervous. I want to make sure everything is there, and, uh, and you're pack, you're and more calm. Pack. And then we get to the shoot, and you're actually more kind of hypersensitive and everything that's going on and making sure everything is there. So we follow a very careful shot list yeah. that you touched on, yeah. with the colors and when you have a series like 12 books, possibly more it's the mood. yeah you want to create a very different mood in your yeah, shots different. and that's like if most if we showed you our photography from the shoot most photographers wouldn't understand it but we're we're, we're completing illustrations photo illustrations into a photo bashing process so we're actually looking for something very different and we want to create a mood in each shot and, and we do that quite a bit if you agree michael you know we see yeah. the atmospheres you know you, we capture I'm, I'm really proud of yeah, I'm very specific. Do you remember when we first met, Michael? I uh, do. We talked about it a little bit earlier back at uh, Boston uh, Fantasy Festival. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, bring it up. Go ahead. Yeah, what, so we understand now that Gene's answer was absolutely we can do this, which translated to I really hope we can do this. <laughs> which he, he, but what was your, imp because when I, I actually knew at the time that I had this passion project, but I wanted a certain feel. I wanted to see what it would be like to spend the effort to create an amazing amount of images and then make sure, you know, with a concept already in mind, and then write the books to make sure we integrate that into it. And so in seeing your work, I understood at that moment that I was looking at a production capability to, to accomplish this passion project. But what were you thinking? Uh, well, you came up, and I was I was the first one to, to speak to you, and you said something about the art in the back, and I was like, well, we're creating a world here. And once I said that, I felt like I saw your eyes go, it was like, this is world building. Good pitch. This is like, this is, we're, we're creating what you're dreaming up, you know, like this is, this, and, and the second you, we just got into this really intense conversation, and I think you must have picked up on it because then Gene like walks over and he's like, "Hi," blah, 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 blah. but me, I just go in at uh, just it doesn't matter what you say. We're gonna do what you want. Like we are capable of anything. Yeah. I, there are no bounds. So, and, and Gene is in the background going, "No, I'd rather say I think I can do it." <laughs> no, I'm like, she doesn't let me. No, that that's not an option. <laughs> you know, there's there's capability everywhere. So I feel like we know somebody, it's a network of people. Um, Gene studies a lot. Like if he's like, I'm not sure, he'll just, he researches things. And I think that's really yeah. important. Like the way that I'm researching in yeah. a different way, that's why I think we're a really good team because he researches um, the technical side of it. And I'm just like, we could totally do that. Of course we could do that. Like, why wouldn't we do I that? <laughs> so I, I'm curious. Um, we. we did discuss it, but I'm curious what you thought about the desire to create the video, and now that you've seen the latest version, what are your thoughts? The video of the car and Tazanta and going yeah. through the city. I mean... <laughs> Try to be positive. I am... <laughs> <laughs> um, there were moments when I wanted to just break something. And that I did. I don't mean like your hand or like. Yes, you do. <laughs> I mean, I yes, like, you do. No, there were times when I was like. I we got a little obsessive on this project. Yes, yes, it was obsessive, but I can understand that because I obsess in a different way. There was a lot of stuff. I just felt like for me, it's like pull it back in. Let's get done what we need to get done. What we first said we were going to get done, and then work on that. And that's how it happened that we brought another player. And he was able to pick up that while we were able to like get the work done, like the book cover, like everything else that we were saying that we wanted to do. Like to me, that was first, like yeah. that had to be first. And then he would like go off on this, the second Frank or somebody would send him like, you have to see this. I'm like, no, we have to finish this before I have to see this. And this is what we have to do first. And then we can see this. This is like the, this is like, you know, this, the whipped cream. We don't even have the cherry yet. This is just the whipped cream around it's it. It's part of the process. It is part of the process. but. It's amazing. I love it. And when you see it, I'm like, when's the movie coming out? Like, mm -hmm. that's what I think when I see it. I'm like, when's yeah. the movie? Like, what, yeah. what, did Netflix pick this up yet? Do we have a series? Because <laughs> this is what it should be. I, I go crazy when I watch like really intense, crazy, like 
Japanese science fiction movies or You're even a commercial. I just like I'm crazy for fiction. I'm crazy yeah. for it. Yeah. So when I saw that, I was like, you know, of course I'm trying to be quiet because I'll nitpick it. I'm like, we need a little bit more color here. I feel like we should have a little more light coming from the bottom. But if yeah. I say that, I know I'm gonna lose him for like a week. Because he's gonna <laughs> get yeah. into it and then like he's gonna be with Frank and blah, 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 and then he's gonna be like you know. Yeah, but we made it through. But you did, and it looks amazing, yeah. and I hope yeah. that you love it because but, it's amazing. Yeah, and you, yeah, you're right. I mean, we we just stay on our schedule. <laughs> it's just a so, lot. Of, it's lot yeah. in the kitchen, so I feel like it's a challenge to like step back because to me, it's um, the project that we first. You're the production designer. Yeah. So, it's natural so in my mind, design. like I had a vision, and then when somebody else comes in who had no idea what was going on, and he was just looking at something that was, you know, dropped in front of him and said, "We want it to look like this." For me, I kind of saw the world in a different way. So when all of this stuff was coming up, I made an issue and I said, "I don't want to see a bunch of, you know, women's faces and stuff like that." I I, I just didn't feel like that was what this was. Mm -hmm. And so I think we, I yeah. think that's when we removed that and we started putting, um, we advertised some of the other people yeah, involved, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I yep. just, and then they were like, oh, no, they're placeholders, placeholders. So I, I said, you're going to forget one of these. And that's not what this is about. I don't want it to look like everything else. I don't want it to look like everyone else's. This is something different. This is something we're creating that is brand new. So let's make it cool. Not like, oh, it's cliche. Like, I don't, I don't, that's not. I have a very strong opinion about it because in my mind, and I'm hoping that I was pulling it from your comments in your mind oh, you, yeah. and creating it. And so let me let me give you an update. Yeah. As of 45 or maybe an hour ago, um, certainly a lot of the launch partners who will be mentioned and everything will come on the show. But what we have a unique call with one of those launch partners where LNBPN did not expect them to allow us to use their logo and we got approval from Apple Books to use their logo on one of the nice. things. They, uh, every single partner who cares to is like, yes, we want our logo in that video. Awesome. That's fantastic. See? <laughs> and if you had a bunch of, you know, Asian female faces, they wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> We're going to go back to Steve now. We're going to get off the, the, the hot button here. Sorry. <laughs> Steve. No, it's, all good. it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. No, it's it's amazing. And the car is truly a piece of art. Let's talk. Isn't it? It really oh, is. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> and we have talked about the car, and we did talk, Sasha, about you being the grounded one, which I can kind of see and kind of not see as you go spiraling off here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, all right, all right, all right. I came in late. I had to like, get a lot of information. <laughs> all right. Well, we need to wrap this up because we're going to do another one. We're, going, we're, we're not allowed Limited. to show the video yet. Um, the marketing department is not letting us show the video yet, so, we, so we'd love to have you guys back on again with Sasha, you there from the very beginning, um, and, and s some other people on your team kind of to talk through the making of the video and, and some of what went into that, and then we can show bits and pieces of the video or, or the whole video or whatever so that people can actually see it and get some context about what we're talking about now. But I think what people are hearing is just everyone's excitement about what's been created for this. I mean, it's taken a while. It's and it's it's yeah. amazing. Got a great like, team. I of love I love laying it out and seeing all the covers in a row. Yeah. And then it's yeah. like, turn on the video, pop the video <laughs> on. And it's like, oh my god, this is so I, cool. I, I love all the art across the yeah. board. I'm I really love the way the it. car. When you see the car, and we did like just the reveal. It was like just a little bit of that of the cover of the car and just kind of turning it a little bit. It just was, re it was really, I thought it was a really magical. Yeah. And what's available now for people to see at the, at the website, opusxseries.com is the first of the car reveal images and the first six book covers. So check that out. We'll have a link to that in the show notes and, and on YouTube where you can see that um, we'll be revealing the car over the course of the next several weeks. And then we're going to start revealing some of these videos. And, and you know, we're super excited. It's really hard because we're like kids in the candy store. We just want to say, hey, but let's show them this now. And the marketing department says no. The BTS, is, uh, the BTS it's amazing. You're like, yes. what's happening? Yes. Yeah. That's happening. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So very exciting. Yeah. 
Yes. So, Thank you guys all so much for being here. Michael Anderle, <laughs> Jean Malika, Sasha. Yeah. L- Amazon? Amazon. Amazon. Thank you. Yes. Amazon. Thank you. And the dog. What's the dog's name? Roxy. Roxy. Roxy, that made a, uh, a brief appearance. Thank you guys for being here. We'll do this again in a few weeks. All right. Thank right. you thank very you. much. Thank you. This is fun. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.